Uh, my name is Zeynep Falay von Flitner. Uh, I'm one of the board members um, and I've been active last year, at least in the uh, community. And today I will be hosting Eloise to talk about a very interesting project uh, done in Wales, but we'll come to that soon. A uh, couple of uh, words about System Change Finland. So we're a group of people, we're a um, non-profit organization uh, uh, and our aim is to cultivate a society that can deal with systemic and complex challenges. We are learning together different systems thinking tools and try to organize this type of events where we can connect with the community, uh, share cases and um, create support groups. <clears throat> and we are very uh, open, so anybody can join. You can either um, just a second, follow us in different uh, social media channels like Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we have a Slack group if you like to join. And you can also uh, become a member and also an active uh, member in the community organizing this type of events. We're always looking for new ideas. So you can, if you have some good suggestions and content, we would be very happy to be a platform uh, and or, uh, help you to organize together these events. Okay, and again, today's igniter will be Eloy Smith Foster. Uh, he, she's a senior service designer at uh, and futurist at Futurist, and my ex colleague from Hellon actually. Um, she's also a climate justice activist. Um, we've been talking with Eloise about systems thinking and design and social impact, and I am very happy to uh, host her today. Without further ado, I like to give the word to Eloise. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Eloise. Um, so yeah, welcome to uh, this session, which is about voluntary sector futures. Um, and I'm going to um, start by introducing you to a bit more of the, the project, what I'm talking about, the focus of the, the session, the background to the work that we did, um, and, uh, and then go into uh, more of the process and methodology and pick out some key highlights in the steps um, and talk about some of the outcomes from the projects, some key insights we had on different levels of kind of system change um, and talk about sort of close with looking at um, what, what has the value of the work been, what have been the key learnings and successes. I've been fortunate enough to to have a sort of six month debrief after stepping back from the work with some uh, colleagues based in Wales uh, to hear sort of how it's progressed since then. Um, so lots of insight to share. And this is very um, timely because uh, this piece of work um, is sort of one chapter in a, in a longer piece of systemic um, projects as it were over time in Wales. And I was involved in this project last year in 2021, um, doing a co-design, uh, designing and developing a future vision and kind of seeds of change for the voluntary sector and society in Wales, um, very closely with a number of partners, um, with uh, many members of the, the public, of the voluntary sector, beyond the sector, and it culminated in a report which uh, sort of extensively documents the process, um, the key outputs, the vision itself, how we got there and sort of actions that are taking place to make that vision come to life. Um, and so some of the key partners you can see lined up along the bottom, we were sort of commissioned and our core partner was WCVA, the Wales Council for Voluntary Action, uh, Third Sector Support Wales. The, uh, we were supported by Future Generations Commissioner for Wales and the Welsh um, Government. And um, they were sort of supporting the co-design and, and development of the work. And I think there should be some uh, links popping up in the chat if you want to um, download anything. Um, so just to highlight the core team, especially as 
I think all members of the team are here <laughs> in the in the chat, so they might be able to answer questions that, that pop up as well. Um, I was working alongside the, a sort of core team who were designing the process and facilitating um, the, the, the implementation of the process and the co-design work, Futurist kind of coming in as a, a sort of neutral external um, partner, Suzanne and Anna from the Wales Council for Voluntary Action, bringing in that local knowledge, that place-based knowledge, um, the, the direction and the agenda. Um, and um, just for people who don't know, I think people in Finland who may be more aware of Futurists, um, but um, this is a, a Nordic organization and we were also brought in for our global mindset and kind of pan-European methodologies and insight to really complement the community level um, sort of futures work that had been going on in Wales already. And I wanted to introduce a little bit about my background, because when we talk about systems change work, I think we need to be very conscious of our sort of bias, our position, um, who's facilitating the work. Um, and I think it sort of helps uh, shape the, the lens of the work as well um, in this systems change discussion from, from my point of view. So my background is in human-centered design and service design, um, at, uh, which I'm currently doing at Futris. And uh, for a few years, I've been seeing some sort of gaps in human-centered design, um, that it tends to be more individualistic, looking at short to medium-term timelines, um, but it also has lots of strengths. It's obviously very creative, it's agile, it's iterative, it encourages an experimental mindset. And sometimes we really need those short term timelines to deal with urgent sort of issues. Um, and the focus is often to bring about innovation and organizational change, which is really powerful. Um, but when we think about moving beyond that and becoming more planet centric, um, I had experience doing activism and voluntary work, which sort of really complemented design work um, because activism is working as a, a collective. It's highly networked. It's about being life centered, thinking of the planet as a stakeholder. Um, it's often looking at intergenerational timelines or at least long term timelines. And it's very fluid and dynamic and really aiming for that systems change piece. So it's through kind of activism that I found my way to systems change kind of theory and realized um, a lot of the methods of systems change practice are, are being used in activism and, um, and sort of started looking in that direction for answers to kind of develop um, my practice and the work we're doing. Uh, futurist to become more systemic. Um, and there's quite a few partners involved. It was a, an expansive collaborative project. Uh, I'm just going to highlight uh, the, the two key ones. Um, so Wales Council for Voluntary Action, you'll see the word WCVA popping up, um, and the third sector support Wales, we worked very closely with. And together they make up a network of support organizations for the whole of the voluntary sector across Wales. So WCVA is the national um, sort of umbrella organization, a national membership body for all voluntary organizations. They offer support, they're a conduit for accessing funding, they host events. Um, and so together these organizations provide, provide this kind of framework and, and supportive infrastructure. And um, as you can see from the right, we're kind of showing that um, the voluntary sector is very dynamic and networked. There are over 40,000 registered charities and third sector organizations. And that's what I'm referring to when I say voluntary sector, it's not just volunteers, it includes sort of charities, um, and, and different types of organizations. And a big proportion of those are micro charities. Um, so sort of 
local lunch clubs or very small street based volunteering or um, uh, organizations with a turnover of less than 10,000 a year. So there's lots of sort of micro grassroots charity work going on um, is to kind of set the scene. And so that is the range of perspectives that we needed to consider when we uh, sort of entered this work, we were really thinking about um, how do we get that depth of engagement and uh, sort of bring in that diversity of voice and aim to be as inclusive as possible for all the different types of organizations that WCBA needs to serve. Uh, the vision needs to integrate their voice and, um, and therefore have um, support the strategic development that will, will enable better service provision. Um, so just a, an example, we have, for example, uh, for instance, Friends of uh, Cymru, Sickle Cell and Thalassemia. Uh, we've got Health, we've got Creativity, we've got Scouts Cymru. Um, we've got, we also had organisations outside of Wales involved, like SCVO, VO is the Scottish uh, sister organisation to WCVA. Uh, we had sort of faith groups involved, youth groups involved. Um, so this gives a, a small snapshot of the, the different points of view uh, we were working with. Um, and hopefully I'm pronouncing Cymru right, that's Wales in Welsh, because you'll see that popping up. Um, so WCVA came to us with this kind of uh, very uh, um, ambitious brief and question of, you know, considering that that scene that I've set, how can the voluntary sector in Wales, how can we as this national organisation and sort of partnership uh, build our resilience and sort of recover from the pandemic but not only recover and survive, really look towards a better future, one where we can, we can thrive. Um, and uh, Anna, who's, who's present today, one of the, the core team, uh, there's this beautiful quote that kind of sums up that ambition, that it's vital despite, of course, the challenges that many of these organizations have been facing and the voluntary sector has, has been um, incredibly powerful offering support in the pandemic. Um, we need to also take time to imagine futures we want to see um, and create pos positive visions for our future and plan how we can get there together. So I think that sums up the, the direction of the work really well. And um, that's where we came in to help facilitate and bring in our tools and methods. And one of the, the sort of frameworks we often use, uh, which is a, a go-to to, to show how we think about futures work is the futures cone. Um, so this is the idea that when we look at sort of future foresight, um, there we can think of looking forwards as like the beam of a torch where we are today or in the near future, what's going to happen is probably more predictable, it's more clear, and the range of possibilities is more limited. But as you go further out in, in time, further away, five years, 10 years, 100 years, that spectrum of possible futures broadens and diversifies, and it's less and less clear what's going to happen. Um, so I think this, this graphic shows that really well. You can see the sort of maybe most utopian and dystopian sitting at the edge possible, but more unlikely. As we get nearer the center, it's more plausible. And in the very center, the most probable future are what you might predict based on the biggest trends happening today. They seem most likely. Um, but future foresight is all about saying, we're not just going to wait and react to the most likely future. We're going to identify what's possible and pinpoint our most preferred future. So we have the, the highlighted sort of yellow cone of looking at what's plausible that we want to happen. And so then we can figure out how can we make that happen? How can we make that future more likely by what we do today? 
Um, and that's what I love about Futures work. I think it's really powerful, this kind of proactive mindset. Um, and for this, this session sort of focused on systems change, I wanted to really highlight that uh, this is one chapter of work in a bigger um, sort of ongoing um, system change work, as it were, in Wales. And I think it's important to recognise what we do doesn't happen in a silo. It's always building on things that come before. And we need to think long term and think about how we support the work that comes after. So um, there's sort of a, a fund created in the UK called the Emerging Futures Fund. And if anyone's interested in commissioning, I recommend looking them up, really fascinating. But they created funds specifically to support what they term imagination infrastructuring. So funding projects that are working towards more positive, better futures directed by people on the ground, by citizens. Um, and off the back of that, um, WCVA was supported to facilitate with the School of International Futures a community level foresight project where they um, used sort of co-design and participatory workshops and activities to create a, a toolkit together with um, different communities and grassroots organisations in Wales. Um, and that was really successful. There's uh, lots of resources mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, that has fed into the chapter that I was involved in and our team, um, this uh, a different uh, collaboration of partners um, working at a national level and utilizing the toolkit and the, the insight seeds of change that came out of that first project, taking it forward, expanding it, bringing in more voices. And after we stepped away towards the end of 2021, um, WCVA uh, and partners took the work forward and they've worked with another organization to develop a theory of of change and um, are sort of implementing and, and changing their strategy and sort of business models based on what came out of this, this chapter of work. And that brings me to our process and methodology in more um, sort of concrete step-by-step -step terms we can go through. So this is the toolkit that I've been speaking about, uh, Mikhail's drop some things in the chat. So everything uh, we're sharing is, is very much sort of open source. It's accessible if you want to experiment. Um, and this toolkit was, as mentioned, the community level. So using um, different tools and methods in workshops to, to build uh, seeds of change. And we used our Futurist Lean Futures creation handbook and toolkit to bring in additional methods, secondary research approaches, um, service design methodologies, others futures tools to expand this and, and integrate um, more, more input. So you can, uh, both of these have sort of facilitation notes, canvases, um, guidance. So feel free to, to take a look if you're interested. And so we combine those two toolkits to get that depth and that breadth and um, sort of implemented it in three parts, starting with scoping and horizon scanning, which ended in making seeds of change that I'll define very soon. Scenario building, turning that into a much bigger, broader vision, which is kind of the North Star that integrates the different points of view. And then taking that back down into how we, we now know where we want to be, but where are we now? What do we need to do together to get there? And that brings me to the outcomes and insights. So um, this is where I look at more granular, the kind of key steps and pieces that, that came out of the work. 
starting with scoping and horizon scanning. So in this section, we used, um, we started off um, building connections, finding the right networks to engage with. We used in-depth interviews um, and sort of scanning of, of trends and signals um, to get a, a breadth of understanding of what's happening in Wales, what's coming around the corner. Uh, we complemented that with a survey, a national survey released by WCBA asking people, uh, what are your uh, preferences for the future? What are your biggest priorities? What would your ideal future look like? And we turned all this insight into seeds of change and built new ones through hands-on um, co-design sessions and workshops. Uh, and I'm going to pick out a few highlights. So um, this is what some of the, the sort of tools look like that we use to start off with. Um, so these canvases we used in Miro to engage lots of collaborators and really get everyone involved in, in from the sort of different uh, perspectives in the, the main organizations to frame their priorities, the scope of the work, clarify what was being aimed for, who do we need to include, get an overview of key sources for trends and kind of mega trends. So this was a way to, to kick ourselves off. And we used the PESTEL model um, to do that horizon scanning. So this is um, making sure that you, when you do research, you're looking at all the different angles of um, society and you're covering sort of politics, what's happening there, what's coming up, what economical shifts are taking place, what's happening with society and individuals, technology and innovation, legislation and the environment. So it's a helpful way to start thinking about uh, nature as a stakeholder and looking at different things happening there. For example, Wales is quite low lying in many areas. So there's lots of signals about increased risk of flooding in the future, especially around the coast. Um, and another example of a sort of weak signal that's turning into a trend is um, there's lots of articles on the well-being economy and donor economics. And that's something that people in Wales uh, are really interested in and groups are forming around. So we were, we were really looking at local organisations and initiatives uh, think tanks, reports, um, local newspapers to, to really get that, that broad sweep of, um, of different, different sort of potential seeds to be aware of. And I'm aware I've been saying the word seeds of change quite a few times, so I just want to define um, what that means. Seeds are um, sort of initiatives or innovations which are already happening, but they're not widespread. They're, they're usually new and small, they're not yet widespread. So I think a really good example is when electric bikes sort of, and bike sharing schemes first appeared, um, that would have been a seed of change. Now they've become quite a big trend, um, but they point towards, there's a lot going on around urban mobility and cycling that points towards a sort of the, a changes in the way we use the city um, and you could create seeds of change around that and so that's exactly what we did we had workshops uh, on Miro where we uh, shared seeds of change we had a lot of discussion it was really energizing to um, sort of share this with people hear their reactions people being very honest about the type of future that they wanted, creating new seeds. And this is just one example of how you get from sort of uh, different sources and input to a, uh, a seed. Uh, so this one is about the well-being economy. And we're imagining in 2030, Wales has a well-being economy where it's the measure of the nation's success rather than GDP. And it's part of their progressive national identity and they're in a global partnership around the well-being economy with like-minded nations like Iceland or even Finland, for example. 
Um, so this was a, a very popular seed. So I wanted to share some key insights that came out of the, um, the uh, participatory sessions we had, as we had quite a number um, with lots of different uh, voices coming through and kind of exchanging thoughts, learning from each other, sharing stories. It was a, a really valuable experience. Um, and there's many different needs and sort of expectations towards uh, WCVA and their partners, depending on the organization, its scale, it, how established it is. And we started to build this, this picture um, at, from a high level that we have the majority of sort of micro, small, medium, voluntary organizations who are supported by all these different bodies through their sort of networks, funding, support mechanisms. For example, the, the Future Generations Commissioner, um, county voluntary councils, larger voluntary sector organizations are supporting smaller ones. Uh, they're connected to sort of healthcare services in the public sector. Um, but uh, there was one group who was uh, particularly underserved by the different support uh, organizations in place um, who shared their, their point of view in these workshops. And that was sort of the most kind of diverse, small grassroots organizations um, who are very close to what's happening on the ground, the, the most in touch with their local communities. And some of them were really... Um, sort of uh, facing barriers to access funding compared to more established and larger organizations. Um, so they were really interested in sort of um, uh, engagement and, and access and support in that kind of area. And this was really, really important because whenever we talk about future visioning, we need to think about who is less well served by the current system that's in place. Uh, then we need to um, bring those voices and needs to the center and make sure if we are creating a, a future vision, we're not uh, repeating current paradigms that don't work for everyone. We're, we're creating, supporting a sort of paradigm shift, redistribution in power. We're really thinking about social justice, something which the voluntary sector is, is very much aware of, especially compared to other sectors. And um, so this is a, a quote from, from one of the people who uh, was happy to, to share their, their voice with us for this work and uh, who was from one of these grassroots organization saying how um, when we look at this kind of vision setting, we all need to be at that table um, to, to represent the whole community of Wales and in all its diversity. Um, so there were some uh, a lot of very authentic, honest uh, conversations coming up. And um, I think the team and what's important when doing this work is to have a lot of humility and be really ready for that mutual learning and to welcome um, different lived experiences. And so how did that translate into a seed of change? This is one of the, the final ones. Um, the first showed was kind of a draft. So we, we wanted to, to frame these seeds as close to what people were saying in, in their own language, human language, as they had shared. Um, so this is an example of, you know, how did we turn this kind of input? How did it direct and shape the, the seeds? Um, so here we have uh, one that is grassroots organizations are highly valued in by 2030 when this seed is has come to life um, for their close connection with different community needs. They form a bridge connecting larger institutions or voluntary organizations with people on the ground. There is high mutual trust and key decisions are made in partnership. This ensures diverse points of view are involved right from the start of discussion or strategic planning. Um, so you can see these seeds, uh, they sort of represent you know we we write them as if it's happening now as if we're in that future and it kind of shows uh what people's concerns are now how they want to flip that around 
and, and change the future. And the seeds are, are all kind of formatted like this in the report. Um, and each of them has references uh, like what you can see on the right, which kind of show, you know, these, these seeds um, often they're happening already, as we've said, but at small scale. So we've got examples of, you know, where is this starting to take place? Who's maybe doing this well or thinking about this? So the idea is by capturing all the seeds, voluntary organizations can, can see those references and connect and link up um, in, in Wales or even beyond. So you might be interested to sort of see those seeds and their sources. Um, and we went from uh, sort of initial 20 seeds to after all these workshops, 55, um, trying to capture all the different perspectives that come out in the workshops, all the different possibilities people had shared. Um, and as mentioned, they're, they're accessible. And the point of the seeds of change is to say, um, although we do have one North Star vision we worked towards, we need to embrace um, sort of multiple different possible futures um, and consider that, you know, these may coexist under that umbrella vision um, and that um, it's good to be cautious when doing one vision. Um, the nuance of what people want to see can get lost. So the seeds capture that detail. Um, and that brings us to the next step, which is working from those disparate seeds into that one North Star vision. Um, and we did this by creating sort of more holistic uh, statements, clustering the seeds into themes, turning them into overarching statements, and then building a picture of the sort of 360 degrees of that world, uh, that ideal world from those, those seed clusters. And here's a, a snapshot of the vision. It's described uh, more fully in the report. It's quite descriptive, so I won't um, share that now. Um, but it had kind of 10 specific points to it. And it's the, the voluntary sector vision overlaid on top of um, this image of the future of Wales by the Future Generations Commissioner, who's also done a lot of research into um, sort of what the future could look like for, for Wales as a whole beyond the voluntary sector. So we were kind of combining these things together. And this is an example of one of the themes, one of the 10 themes, our world is in our hands, um, the parks and buildings we enjoy, the skills we share and our stories and cultures. We can pool all these together to make a neighborhood where everyone belongs. Um, and I won't read the, the whole thing out, but this is sort of describing what does this world look and feel like, this world that the voluntary sector wants to see, what's happening and what does it enable. Um, and one of the key insights that Suzanne um, shared with me out of a number uh, in the sort of six month review when we were reflecting together was that uh, it's not even before we get to developing actions and goals from the vision already by doing this work together, uh, by bringing different points of view together and creating a kind of shared story or weaving our different stories together um, and embracing uh, different points of view. We're starting to build commitment. People are already starting to pledge the common will to, to work together. Um, so it's really powerful, just that, that listening and that exchange. And that brings us to part three, where we did go from that visioning down to the granular actions. And uh, there was uh, a lot of uh, hands-on work, more uh, workshops, bringing new people in, bringing a continuation of some of the same people to look at that vision and use uh, a model called the three horizons um, to sort of break it down and look at where are we now? What do we need to do to get there? And using a number of different tools um, to get to this point of sort of um, six uh, refined um, action areas that the voluntary sector described, you know, based on that vision, what can we do together 
to to make that come to life what can we do today what can we start doing tomorrow um, and they've described that in, in more detail in the report but just to give some examples they were talking about um, one of the key thematic sort of action areas is to overcome the digital divide um, as you've mentioned already with the the sort of adoption of evs um, we can also think about adoption of technology more broadly that um, there are people who are really um, missing out on essential services and less able to participate in society because of limited access and a sort of lack of inclusion in some digital services. So we were talking about how do we um, train volunteers or volunteers train members of the public and what can be done there. Uh, there was a really strong desire to redefine success that uh, there's a big uh, structural issues around the way funding is commissioned based on short term goals, based on finances, and it doesn't reflect the impact of voluntary services on communities, on families. It just looks at uh, individuals. Uh, and there was lots of discussion of how do we measure social value, um, sort of connecting to initiatives like Social Impact Cymru who are doing really, really um, innovative work around this. Um, and, we, and there was a discussion of strengthening the, the sector, building bridges, uh, enabling communities to design and deliver services themselves, for themselves. Um, and um, so, yeah, there's some really powerful goals. And based on that, that sort of fed into WCVA's strategic work and they also reflecting on what their members are saying they want and need, uh, they were defining their own sort of internal goals as well. And um, so a couple of a couple of insights that uh, this futures work drew a lot of people in. Um, there was a lot of energy around the idea of connecting new relationships were formed through the participatory workshops. Uh, a lot of energy and, and momentum was created from this kind of work. And the impact of sort of translating it into goals, and we also worked with WCVA to turn it into sort of actions and first goals for them, based very much on what the members and uh, participants had defined. We saw that re resilience and diversity um, and uh, sort of come to the forefront of their strategy and workforce development, um, thanks to what came out of the vision and what the members were, were saying they want. Uh, and there were many other impacts on the, the strategy of um, TSSW as well, Third Sector Support Wales. Uh, which brings me to the, the conclusion, um, when we sort of think about shifting systems um, it's important to consider this on different levels. And I had discussions after the project, looking back and pulling out some key, key insights um, to help us understand, you know, what value has been generated compared to our original objectives. Um, it's often discussed that futures work is quite difficult to to measure um, and to evaluate and, and measurements can be quite qualitative, um, but it's, it's important to, to, um, to consider how you're, how you're measuring the success of the work. Um, so a nice framework that I uh, went through with, with Suzanne in particular and sort of reflecting on the project were these different um, levels of system change. You can consider it on an individual level looking at mindsets, you can look at interpersonal level, how have relationships shifted, um, organisational, is it um, centred, is it more distributed, what's shifted in the organisation, and systemic in terms of how has the work impacted wider society. And so some of those impacts were there was a sort of shift in mental models and I heard how um, members were being considered less as external and becoming considered kind of more um, like internal members of WCVA and the, the organization. 
um, and that there's kind of an understanding that uh, dynamics and the way funding is is distributed and sort of relationships needs to to shift and there was a lot of discussion of engaging with the grassroots and what that meant um, and people really felt heard and just being present really listening having a very genuine mutual exchange can already start to create shifts um, so the quality of listening had a really big impact um, and there was a, a strong um, sort of feedback that WCVA is very well placed between um, the sort of uh, autonomous uh, voluntary organizations, public sector, government to hold that space for listening, to be a leader, to um, show what, what um, the voluntary sector can do um, to, to sort of showcase and amplify that we have experts people who are really in touch with communities and what citizens need and want through the voluntary sector. Um, and we need to move away from this idea that the voluntary sector is the third sector, which is a sign in the UK at least, that it's kind of third compared to the other sectors. So that was also strong in the vision to, to shift the voluntary sector and become more a sort of respected partner and expert to, to government. Uh, which is also linked to the systemic impact. Uh, the work did really support this strategic five-year review um, of, of WCVA and TSSW strategy of their business model. Um, and the, the strategy was very positively received because people were seeing uh, what, they, what they wanted to see, what they had asked for was present. Um, and I think this is a really good example of how um, going slow and doing this, this kind of sl work more slowly than it's normally done can uh, enable speedier progress later on because people feel heard and see their, their wishes integrated. Whereas if you kind of speed up in the beginning and don't involve people, there can be more friction when you try to take the strategy forward. Um, and so just expanding on that a little bit, um, we, we really saw how this work, it's happening over months. In 2021, 20, the pandemic is still going on. And there was a recognition that, you know, the voluntary sector has been really strained in the pandemic. It's also really showed up and helped people. Um, but there's already been a huge amount of change and the ground kind of moving under people's feet, a lot of challenge, a lot of urgency. So when you do this work, it's really important to consider the context and it can raise fears and, and anxiety. And there was this sense that, you know, there's going to be even more change to get to this very ambitious future. But having the space um, allowed people to kind of reflect, to take a moment to breathe, to reset and ask these deeper questions and kind of process what had happened in the pandemic as well in a different way. Um, and the important point of the, the organization really listening, really taking on what members value um, and, and what they want changed as they renew their kind of membership offer is, is very integral at the organizational level. Um, and the, yeah, just to, to emphasize the, the fact that it's, it's also fed into those strategic goals and actions. So we're seeing that being taken forward into the theory of, of change work that happened after our partnership. And there's a new application out for additional futures work. So this is a chapter that is continuing to be, to be built on. And so, you can kind of sum up uh, in many ways the, the benefits of future foresight for any organization. If you're thinking of using this yourself or in your community can be considered to be actionable insight. Um, so even though you're getting an awareness of where people want to go um, and what they want for the future, uh, it's really becomes actionable today 
um, it's not like you're you're waiting around for that future to emerge um, and it's leading to better services, better strategies today. Um, it's uh, enhancing cultures, it's supporting culture change to be more participatory, uh, more active listening, more creative. Um, it was really humbling the, the, the sort of richness of ideas and wishes and sort of radical aims people had uh, who were most in touch with the sort of key challenges of society. Um, and that also leads to the third point that by being doing it in this slower, more inclusive way and deep way, you are going to get more equitable more caring futures and um, you and it's going to sort of support you not to simply repeat uh, paradigms that aren't aren't working. And so that that brings me to the summary. Um, if you are interested in in what I've described, uh, all the methods are open and accessible. Um, that's a sort of design justice principle to share. Um, share work, have it be community led, share knowledge with the communities. Um, so WCBA has their toolkit on their website with facilitation notes. There's also the Futurists um, canvases that we used in Miro. And of course, the, the report, if you want to dip into any of these areas more deeply, everything I've discussed is, is sort of detailed there as well. Um, so thank you for listening, and I think we can open the, the discussion. Thank you very much, Eloise, for excellent presentation. I think the project is uh, brilliant, and I think your structured presentation made it actually really easy to understand and connect this future's work in a, with a system change perspective in a very practical context. So thank you very much. I would like to open now um, the floor for questions. If you have something you would like to raise, uh, raise your hand or write in the um, chat. Um, yeah, I, I guess there's a lot, everybody agrees, like there's a lot of comments coming in, Alois. Um, maybe one question that has been actually discussed um, about the language of uh, futures and there's a little bit this barrier about the futures literacy and how to apply it in a practice did you have any experiences when you were running these workshops with uh, participants how did you translate these methodologies into everyday language um yeah that's a really good question i i didn't quite have time to to read the whole comment but um, that did come up and I think um, that was it's a it's a really valid point and I um, almost had a slide on this but um, uh, it is important to to recognize that sometimes these tools and methods uh, they're imp they can be important to kind of show um, what's less visible in the system but sometimes what's less visible to the most dominant groups is very visible and evident to those with less power or who are less dominant and the tools and methods or language can get in the way. Um, so we did have an experience where um, with some of the groups, uh, we, um, we sort of started with structure and realized um, the language and structure was creating uh, more barriers to emergence than we would like. So we stepped back and reframed and let um, it become much more of a natural uh, discussion. Um, so that's that's something you need to really consider. And we thought about language a lot. Um, and we also uh, really uh, sort of put the, the framing and the, the writing of the future description itself in the hands of Suzanne and sort of people uh, locally placed uh, because we wanted to avoid um, bias and kind of um, our, our jargon coming in that we might have from the private sector. So I think, yeah, who, who's writing the outcomes that are going to be shared is, is really important. And if it's someone 
local and in touch with the community who can use uh, relevant language and terms that's really important so we did have quite a bit of discussion of there was specialist language to the private sector specialist language to the voluntary sector around co-production um, so yeah that is something very much to be uh, wary of and we tried to to break things down and present things sort of visually and, and, and using the clearest language we could but I think there was definitely some learning about that I hope that answers the question yes definitely we typically uh, talk about in systems change we should not simplify complexity but make it more comprehensible and I guess design or step better copywriting and language can help with that making complexity easier to communicate <clears throat> so um again i like to remind you you can take the stage and ask your questions to alois or also other members of the uh, project are here so that's also interesting if anybody wants to ask questions um, maybe i can continue to ask um, a couple of more while I'm waiting. Um, so from the method side, <clears throat> do you have any um, recommendations? Which ones were most effective uh, for you to implement? Where did you have more maybe challenges? Mm. Um, so I think um, the seeds of change were one of the most powerful methods and I think that can be done in quite a structured way or you can kind of go to communities and they were also inviting us to to listen and hear uh you know their seeds and and this concept uh was quite clear uh, and the other piece is the the three horizons was uh really helpful to to sort of take that vision down to more specific actions so the three horizons, um, the one where you're looking at the third horizon, what's happening in the future, where do you want to go? Where are you now? How do you get there? That's quite a, a nice uh, breakdown that, that really makes sense to people. And we were able to work through um, that framework and come up with um, really kind of spot on kind of goals and action areas for the voluntary sector. I see Ashley, you've got your hand up. I'm wondering if you want to ask a question. Yeah, hi. Um, so I'm um, tuning in from Seattle. Um, I have a project um, that was really successful and we also have some other work that my business partner and I have, we're kind of starting to build this vision of building these kind of, um, chaining these projects together and building to something bigger. And I thought that that was really interesting to see how you have these different phases with mm. different organizations. And I was curious if that vision of those kind of, um, you know, di different steps or phases, was that a vision that you had in starting the process or was it something that you found um, kind of built on its own and started linking organically? Mm. Yeah, that's a really good question. I think we we started with the WCVA toolkit, which has these three sort of three modular phases as a baseline. And it was sort of analyzing that and realizing that uh, this was built for communities, for, for sort of maybe a specific town or a few organizations to use very locally. And we needed to enhance that and bring in other methods to reach kind of within the scope and the time limit to, to reach the kind of breadth and depth that we needed. So quite early on, we did bring in the, the Futurist Toolkit and look at how they could be combined. Um, and both of those we've sort of used before. So we're able to map something out from the start. But we definitely uh, adapted as we went and some tools we might adjust or simplify or um, as we went along. 
Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, that's a good, a good question. Definitely important to, to be open to adapt in systemic work because things can definitely arise and shift. Thank you, Ashley, for the question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How about if you would do it now from the beginning, what would you do differently? It's, you had a lot of reflections. Do you have any thoughts? Mm. So um, uh, this is this is a, a question uh, discussed in the, the six month reflection as well of um, what we learned and what we might do differently. And we discussed um, sort of broadening the um, uh, sort of voluntary sector and citizen uh, participation to create um, thematic groups. Uh, Suzanne had a really nice framing of um, something akin to almost sort of citizen assemblies, taking the themes from the research, creating these thematic uh, sort of community led groups to further develop and, and analyze the research. Um, and so kind of do some more legwork before getting to the, the overarching vision. Um, and I think another piece uh, I would work on is uh, it took quite a bit of time at the start of the project to build the right networks and the right level of diversity. And I would um, be interested to see how, uh, how this would work, sort of expanding the timeline further to, to take more time to sort of build trust and build the, the diverse networks and kind of um, work from the grassroots upwards, especially now we have the, the insight that we didn't have at the beginning about the, the grassroots. Yeah, I really liked what you said about slowing down, helping to speed up the adaptation process. And it's quite counterintuitive to our consultancy work, I guess. We are trying to be as effective as possible usually, and there's a cost to it. So how to finding this slowing down <clears throat> or getting the permission, giving the permission to sl slow mm -hmm. down for the long-term uh, positive change is maybe an important topic to discuss. Definitely. Yeah, I think taking care in this work um, because especially with, with this context that um, there has been a lot of um, challenge and, uh, and sort of pain over the course of the pandemic. So it's about being human and sort of taking care of the people who are participating, I think is really important. Yes, uh, we have a couple of last minutes. Any, anybody wants to give feedback, share thoughts, final question? I'm also wondering if Tom or Anna or Suzanne uh, would like to add any thoughts to anything you're very welcome it's it's nice to have you all on the call no you've done a great job you've covered everything i've got anything else to add yeah great job sorry the cat is uh wanting to be fed but um yeah thanks for that and also seeing in the chat lots of kind of interesting examples of what other people are are doing elsewhere so yeah we look to go on that LinkedIn uh, um, page to try and hook up with people. It's really interesting. Thank you. And just from me to say what a pleasure it's been to work with Futurists and how enlightened we were by um, the piloting by Futurists, especially Eloise and Tom of this work, and that it's really given us um, a very strong and positive steer for our next five years strategy and we're uh, finding that the buy-in across the organization and with all the 
the, the partners that we worked with so much stronger because we talked around the table about what we wanted to do. And that was kind of the, the start of a, a commitment to change. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think we need to acknowledge the role of the clients who believe in these new methodologies and commission this type of work and, you know, trust this uncertainty of the process. So I think that's yeah. one of the key success factors for, for this type of field. Definitely. And, and maybe just to build on that sort of the, the often unacknowledged or unscoped work of building those networks or relationships and building on there the discussions that happen in these workshops that's very much needs to be done in partnership and Anna and Suzanne were doing a lot behind the scene to um, sort of connect people to the work and and sort of um, weave uh, different ideas and pieces and projects together beyond just this piece of work um, so that's something to to consider if you're thinking about doing these projects, the time needed for that as well. Very good point. Okay, so now we are at the end of our time. Thank you so much, Eloise, and everybody who joined this event. And um, yeah, we would love to hear more uh, suggestions of uh, event ideas and uh, we are happy to host more similar good talks if you know anybody in your networks who would love to speak we would be uh, happy to host a system change Finland so have a good rest of the evening and for better futures <laughs> <laughs>